Hello everyone. I hope everyone's doing well today. Well, this morning. I wanted to uh, do this video earlier, but I thought it was just too late and but I just couldn't get this I couldn't get the thought of doing this video out of my head. So the verse is Romans 6 14 for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law but under grace and here's another verse that yet talking about grace and this verse is in the category of eternal security and a lot of uh, those who are unsaved take this verse and twist it out of context and say see you shall not sin you know and it's like that's not what this verse is saying it's saying that because we are we believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and we and when we know that Jesus Christ did absolutely everything necessary for us to be saved we are under God's grace when we are in Christ. And the reason why sin shall not have dominion over us is because we are in Christ. And because Christ fulfilled the law completely. Ouch! Oscar, that hurt. Ow, sweetie. Oscar. Oh, you can't see him because it's too dark. But, what was I saying before he decided to dig his claws straight in my leg? You know, I love him, I really do, and he's a good kitty, but wow, does he ever have some nasty claws. And he loves to put them in your skin, and he loves to draw blood. But back to what I was saying, is that Jesus Christ did absolutely everything necessary for us to be saved and he fulfilled and obeyed the law totally and completely i mean he even said that he didn't come to abolish the law but to fulfill the law and he fulfilled the law by living it perfectly and when we are in christ because he fulfilled it perfectly so did we and it's nothing we did, it's everything Christ did. Everything for our salvation is what Christ did. Discipleship is a whole nother matter. And all these people that talk about work, 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 what they're taught, what they're teaching is discipleship, not salvation. And they say, oh, if you don't have any works, you're going to go to hell, which is a lie straight from place they claim everybody's going if they don't have works but I'm hoping that I'm making sense on this because we are not under the law we are under grace once we are in Christ but you have to be in Christ in order to be under grace and you be and you are in Christ once you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. <coughs> and I just wish all these people who are filled with pride and self-righteousness and arrogance that they would let all that go. They don't want to let that go. They want to feel somehow self-important. I wonder how self-important they're really going to feel when Jesus Christ tells them, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. And be careful, guys. There are people who claim to be saved, claim to be, you know, believe in grace, and they even talk the language and the lingo they know the gospel but as it turns out they're not saved at all they were just you know whatever their 
plan was, you know, to lead people away. That's probably what it is, is to lead people away from the gospel of grace. And they're hoping that people don't get saved, as the Bible claims. And they claim that, as the Bible claims, is false. And when you try and point out all the scriptures, they don't want to hear it because they're too arrogant, prideful, puffed up. It's all about them. It's all about what they do and absolutely nothing about what Christ does. I mean, they make much of sin while making light of Christ. And we make much of Christ, but we don't make light of sin because we know sin has temporal consequences. And sin is very horrible because it allows the devil to come in and take up residence. You know, a saved person can't be possessed, but they can be oppressed. So be careful. And all those people that are saying, oh, well, I've covered this more than once. You know, they claim that they can that, oh, since I'm saved now, because I'm once saved, always saved, I can go out and do all kinds of heinous, sin and heinous sins. And you ought to read some of these heinous sins they claim. And it's like really awful. And it's like um, a couple of them, I almost called the police because, you know, you know whatever they say, that's what they want to do. And one guy mentioned uh, raping and murdering children. I had to pray against this guy, and I had to pray to protect children that are around him. Because, you know, he, he must really want to do that since he brought that up. You know, I mean, it's terrible. But, no, if once you're saved, you are always saved. And as I was saying yesterday in a video, you know, what, you know, Christ covers all sin. And it, you know, I mean, if you choose to not become a disciple of Christ, you choose not to stay in the Word, even if it's only one to two verses a day, you know, it'll make a difference. It'll make a difference. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you have to read 8 to 10 hours a day. I used to do that. That was terribly exhausting. And after I got saved, I went a whole year without reading the Bible. You know, even though I remembered what I had read, and I still remember it, I went a whole year, and it was like my way, and I, I was in total and complete rebellion. Well, actually, it was a year and a half, coming to think of it. A year and a half, I was in total and complete rebellion against Lordship Damnation because that was what I came out of. And, it, you know, the, it, that's the best way I can put it. I haven't told my story, to, you know, except for in private. But my story is terrible. And I'm sure that other people have the same type of story, and one day maybe I'll tell it. But I really wanted to share this verse with all of you and drive the point home. Jesus Christ was delivered. Jesus Christ, the sinless, the spotless Lamb of God, was delivered over for our sins. Not his, but ours. Then he was killed, and he rose from the dead on the third day. And remember, he was it was for our sins that he was delivered over. And he, he died on the cross. He rose again the third day for our justification. Our justification. He, he was already justified because he was totally and completely sinless. And we are justified when so we believe in that. And I hope I'm making this clear. I'm trying to say it in as many different ways as possible and hoping that I get through to somebody. And, well, thank you for listening. And thank you to all my subscribers. And I hope everybody has 
you know, had a good night's sleep when they wake up. And uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful day today. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.